In a moment, we're going to talk about this story that uh, Charlie picked up today. Despicable story about a venue trying to get musicians to play for nothing. And I think it's important. This is the place. It's called uh, Lamport Hotel. Uh, no, Hall, sorry, in Northamptonshire. I don't know it myself. Everything is quite close to Northampton. Yeah, all right, take that down. We don't need that up. But basically, they, they were saying to all musicians, why don't you come and play? Now, they've subsequently, and maybe down to what Charlie's created today on Twitter and Facebook, they've now reversed that decision or tried to clarify it. But it got me thinking, as we get back open, and you know me, I, I love live music, uh, whether it's in the back of a sweaty, dingy little pub, or whether it's a, a big gig. I, I don't like gigs over 2,000, I've got to be straight with you. Uh, I've been to Glastonbury five times, uh, I've had more fun, fun having hemorrhoids, if I'm honest with you. It's just not my idea, you know, to go and watch somebody. Somebody said once said to me, do you want to come and see Bowie? I said, oh yeah, where's he playing? Milton Keynes Bowl. Uh, no thanks. Why not? Because I've got a telly. And nowadays I've got a big telly. I can watch it on a big telly. I don't want to go, I, I'm sorry. I don't get that. I just do not get it. But proper rock and roll, I, I, and it's not... Don't get caught up with the genre. I love my ska and my reggae, as you know. And I ran a club where we the whole idea was live entertainment. Um, I've been recovering from it financially for the last 30 or 40 years. But I do love live entertainment, right? My wife works in the theatre. I used to be in the theatre. It really seems, seems mad to me that Kevin can go to Afghanistan tomorrow without a mask, but you can't go and sit in a theatre. This has got to be rectified, and it's got to be rectified soon. But when it comes to bands, I don't like people then who are venue owners, who have lost money, I accept, recently, but I've also had furlough and I've also had grants, then to turn around and say, will you play for nothing? No, no. Everybody suffered. Uh, Sue Cressman was on earlier. Maybe you'll put your... Uh, comment up again soon. She runs Nailcott Hall, um, which is uh, near, but in between Birmingham and Coventry. It's actually outside Coventry, and they put bands on all the time. But she says we'd never ask anyone to play for nothing. It's just not right. It's just not right, and it's important. Our music scene and the government don't really get this. We punch above our weight. Did you know we produce more records than every other country apart from the U.S. of A. Yeah. We are rock and roll central, yeah? And do these kids, who often never make it, never get anywhere, but they create the fabric of a city centre, don't they? Playing in some shithole that I used to run, or whatever. It's the truth! What I'm telling you is the truth! And it's going to die unless it gets proper subsidy. All those roadies are having word. They've not been looked after. So one thing I definitely know is we do not want a situation where venues then try to exploit them. I will ask the hall to come on next week. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe Friday. But I first of all wanted to discuss it because they've tried to do a U-turn. Let's bring in somebody who knows much more about this than me. Um, his name is Pete Cater. And he runs the Pete Cater Big Band. Look at that. It's a big band. That would make Jules Holland jealous, wouldn't it? Look at the size of that band. Uh, anyway, he runs it. He's a professional musician. And I want to get his views on should they be doing gigs for nothing. Here he is. He joins us now. Good evening, Pete. Hi, John. Thank you for having me All on right, the show. Mate. Yeah, well, I'm good. Thank How you are very you? Much in... I'm, I'm always fantastic. Apart from the haircut, uh, which is well, a combination of uh, Bobby... De well, we could all do with a haircut. This is Bobby Davro stroke uh, Elvin Stardust stroke Elvis. Can you I hear me OK? I have to have a general anaesthetic when I get my hair cut. It's got that bad. <laughs> Good. Tell me about this hall then, Lamport Hall. You've got your knickers in a twist about it. Loads of musicians have today. What is so wrong with what they're trying to do? Do you know what, John? This is this is very interesting. And when I saw this uh, on social media this morning, I just I just let out a sigh. I mean, it was inevitable. I've actually been writing about this, campaigning about um, musicians being exploited and being asked to perform for. Uh, uh, no money, or in this case, uh, I think they were offering a, a picnic hamper, uh, which is uh, a fat lot of use when you've had no work for a year. Um, and and it, it's something that I feel very strongly about, not not from yeah. my point of view, but for all the young players who are kind of trying to get their careers off the ground and they've been completely grounded uh, for the last 12 months. They haven't been able to develop. They haven't been able to go out and 
develop yeah. following, you know, and I mean, you can, you know, social media, Instagram, TikTok is all very well. But if you're a player, if you're in a band, it's all about going out and being in a room and communicating with an audience. That's really what yeah. it's all about. So you say you thought this might happen. And indeed, I got sent a link to one of your articles you wrote about eight years ago about this very thing, about why That's it's right. important not to take free gigs. Explain that to people who aren't in the music business. So to well, I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a common misunderstanding, and I, under, I do get it, that people look at the music industry and they think, oh, look, there's all those millionaires over there. And they, they live in houses yeah. that look like wedding cakes, and they sit around all day uh, dressed in designer clothes and, and, and smoking opium. But actually, it's not really like that. Here, here's what the music industry is really like. The music industry is that nice lady at the secondary school who's teaching your daughter to play the violin. The music industry is that dad at the school gates who disappears for two months on end because he goes off to be a cruise ship entertainer. The music industry is that band who fill the floor at your best friend's wedding. That's sure. the grassroots of the music industry. It's not Robbie Williams. It's not Sting. It's not Dua Lipa or whatever. That elite is a very, very minuscule percentage. The rest of us down here on the coal face, and I consider myself one of the luckier ones. You know, I've, I've had, uh, in my own little way, I'm not rich or famous. I don't think I'd want to be famous. I wouldn't mind being rich. I'd certainly give it a go and see how it works <laughs> out. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of reasonably secure, but I see a degree of exploitation, and it's not new. As you say, you, you've, you've yeah. uh, you know, obviously done your homework and you've seen a – uh, an article that I originally wrote and have subsequently edited in the, in the context of COVID, which was posted six years ago, which was about venues saying, do you want some exposure? It's, sorry, exposure doesn't pay our bills. Yeah. People die from exposure. And the I'm, the, the, I'm not going to repeat the, the title of the blog, but it does make a re, a, an adroit reference to the oldest profession. And the bottom line <laughs> is that once you've given it away, you're going to have a hard job selling it. To charge, and, yeah. And, you know, this is, this is what people need to understand. And I, I, I'm not really that um, – I'm, I'm trying not to get uh, – to use your, your lovely turn of phrase, my knickers in a twist about Lamport Hall – um, well, they've the, U-turned now, so that's good news. Well, well, they have. They, they've done a slightly disingenuous U-turn, and they're now playing the victim card, saying, oh, now there's going to be no live music at all because people have been complaining about this, uh, yeah. which I, 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 I think is a little bit unfortunate and a little bit unnecessary. And, and the thing is, so I, I have had a little bit of a look at, uh, at what they're offering, and it looks very nice, you know, nice food, you know, nice wines. Uh, a very, uh, very impressive menu. And now with this kind of vault fast that they have undertaken, they say, oh, we were thinking of offering opportunities to local amateurs. <laughs> that would be like putting out the picnic and you open up the picnic basket and you find you've got a Dairy Lee triangle and a bottle of Sunny Delight in there. If you're paying And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Oh, everything, everything. <laughs> I'm only pulling your leg. No, you're, yeah. make, you're making some great points. Let's widen the discussion out if we can. I mean, you well, how, many, how many people are in your big band? Well, nobody at the moment because we, we haven't been able to work no, if, for if, over if, a year. If you, uh, if you're in total, including me, there's 15 of us. Okay. And now, there's you with 15. Then mm. there's a band playing in the back of a pub, four or five kids in the band or whatever, or even grown-ups, of course, or a covers band. I thought the good line you said about wedding bands, for example, who make a, a, well, did make a living from doing this, how badly damaged has grassroots been? Grassroots music. And you think a lot of people now, I mean, I know a guy who runs a band and the guitarist has gone off, he's got a job driving for Ocado or something. He yeah, can't well, give yeah. up nights anymore he has yeah. to work you know i know i know i know loads of people like that my you know my uh, brothers and sisters in the profession who you know they've got big mortgages they've got several children you know one minute you're playing for van morrison next minute you're driving a van for morrison's yeah and <laughs> and that really that really is the way it's gone and um i, I I'm, I'm kind of cautiously optimistic I, I think i think the grassroots will survive but things like this um, this this appalling um, fracas that we've had today across so many social media platforms, 
Yeah. They're unhelpful, but I don't think they're going to hold us below the waterline because as a community, I think we're a bit stronger than that. And what about the um, government in terms of furlough? I mean, we hear a lot of uh, stories about the excluded three million and there's yeah. quite a lot of musicians and people who work in the rock industry. I'm thinking now uh, uh, technicians, I'm thinking yeah. roadies and lighting designers who aren't covered. You know, they're self-employed, but they do it through a limited company because they're yeah, told right. the most tax efficient way and they've got yeah. no bread and they've had no bread for 12 months. I know, and, and, it, and it, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. I mean, case in point, uh, a, a colleague of mine um, recently, within the last couple of weeks, had one of his instruments stolen from, I mean, he just had an armful of instruments. He thought, I'll just leave one of them here overnight. And, and he totally picked the wrong day to do it. And his instrument got stolen. And of course, because he's had hardly any work over the, or far less work than he's accustomed to, his instrument insurance had lapsed. So, yeah. you know, we, we as a community, we've all been putting our hands in our pockets to, to replace this instrument. And this is how we look after one another. We're, we're kind of uh, looking at other pe our, our fellow, our colleagues' live streams. We're buying our, our, our colleagues' records and, yeah. and books and DVDs and what have you. And, and in a way, there's a, there's, there's a degree of kind of self-support going on within the community, which I'd like to see expanding. And it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I bought records off some of my friends. I've, you know, checked out some live stream shows and things like that. And, and in, in that way, I think we can help one another. And personally, I've been fortunate that being self-employed, I've qualified for the, uh, the self-employment um, yeah. grant, which has, I have to say, um, it's really, it's really kept the proverbial wolf from the metaphorical door. <laughs> Does the government understand your industry? No, no, they do why? not. They, why? Why? Well, why do you say they're, that? They're just not engaged with it. I mean, and, and I, I'm, I am very apolitical. I don't really have any allegiance to any of the uh, mainstream political parties in this country because I don't think they're worth my while. Um, and my opinion of how the government engages with the arts is just it's it's just a little photo shoot at an award ceremony sometime yeah. or or, yeah. or tony blair inviting members of oasis oh, to yeah. A, um, Gallagher, cool, yeah, yeah. Cool Danny at chindig at 10 downing street it's, it, yeah, yeah. it's it, not me but the those in the upper echelons the, the people who are very visible in the industry they're just yeah. like they're, they're just like little baubles to kind of uh, adorn um, as I say, political events at times. I don't feel any kind of serious engagement with the performing okay. arts from from, uh, from the, the current government, uh, the probably the next government. I, we, you, you mentioned know, we, Tony we, Blair. That's three or four governments ago. I agree with you. It's well, yeah, party I mean, problem. And we, we've been totally, uh, whatever you think about Brexit, our community has been completely abandoned over that. I mean, it, it wouldn't, it's, it, it's not beyond all things to have some kind of musician, I mean, if you can have a COVID passport, you can have a musician passport yeah. where freelancers can pop over to Europe, the, the easy jet set, as we are often known, <laughs> you go out for a day and you go and play to 20,000 sweaty kids jumping up and down in the field and you come home on the 10.45 the following morning. But if that's all going to be subject to, massive amounts of paperwork which yeah. it doesn't need okay. to be because it's not it's not yeah. a big deal it's not a big deal we're not okay. you know we're not importing we're just taking our our, our instrument you know our hand luggage i thought they were getting on top of that problem i thought you had elton john in your corner and a few other people who had made that point and that well, this was going to get sorted no sir sir, sir elton has uh, he's actually been i think one of the the better contenders because he has actually put his head over the parapet and, yeah. and at all levels, all the things that we've had to contend with, this kind of uh, ever so slightly forgotten industry uh, during the entire time of the pandemic, um, I do wish a few more of the household names would nail their colours to the mast a little bit more mm -hmm. than perhaps they've done. I, I haven't felt that there's been that, you know, that this tiny minority who, who account for so much of the revenue that goes through the industry. I don't think have been perhaps okay. as vocal or committed as they might have been to uh, say, you know, my, my, my colleagues down there on the coalface. Okay, we've got to finish in a second. So let me ask you this question. When do you think venues are going to open? 
uh, both from small scale, like I said, in the back of a pub, 50, 60, 100 people, up to the next level, four, 500,000, then up to the arenas. But, and as a musician, and I'm not asking you to make some big political point, but I've got to ask you, as you're one of the entertainers, do you think COVID passports will be part of that? Uh, will they have to be to make I, it happen? I don't. I don't know that they have to be. Um, I think ultimately the thing that people have lost more than anything, because, you know, we understand the restrictions. We understand there's been this disease, you know, plowing through through our society. But the thing that people have lost is choice. And yeah. you, 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 previously you could say, right, I, I'd like to go to that show. I'd like to go to that club, what have you. Yeah. And now you can't. And as w whatever um, restrictions they may seek to continue, and I, I look at my friends, many of them in America, who are, are to all intents and purposes, pretty much liberated from all of this. It ha yeah. I, I think the thing, uh, the, the, the thing with all of this, all I ask for is an appropriate and proportionate response to what's going on. Take it seriously. Don't underreact. Don't overreact. And it's going to take what it's going to take. I mean, in the last kind of hiatus uh, in between lockdowns, I, I, I played a Sunday afternoon show at uh, Ronnie Scott's with the great saxophonist Simon Spillett. We were sold out. I, I think the show was sold out before he'd even booked me to play there. And they were able to work <laughs> at 50% capacity. And, and it stood up. And, and what people have to remember is that some shows are more expensive to put on than others. If you've got a lot of crew, if you've got a lot of lighting, special effects, that sort of thing, that's, you know, then the bills start to tick up. But there are sure. lots of ways that venues could find a way back by doing things that are, you know, you're thinking about economies of scale. I mean, even though I've got a band of 15, it's relatively inexpensive. It's probably less expensive than most people watching this might imagine. It's not cheap. Um, but it's not <laughs> hugely expensive. And Pete, it's so, been, Pete it's, I've got to stop you there. But it's been great talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's just give you another plug again. It's the Pete Cater Big Band. When do you expect to be on the road again? Oh, I don't know. Uh, but in the Go meantime, on, show us. The, 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 record, the records and, and stuff are all available from my website, petecater.org. And if I can be of any help to anybody in the industry who's struggling a little bit and trying to find some sanity in all this craziness that's going on, then just hit me up on my website. And if I if I can just drop a note to somebody and uh, or maybe cheer you up a bit or make a funny response to something on Facebook, then that's kind of what I'm there to do until they let us back on stage. OK. And it's PeteCater.org, yeah? That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. PeteCater.org. Thanks for joining us. Very John, much uh, you enjoyed very much that. What, a, what an interesting uh, conversation. I hope you enjoyed it too. Something a little bit different.